Air quality, how pollutants move in the atmosphere. A STEM video for 11 to 16 year olds by Harry and Giovanna, air quality consultants for ACOM. The UK government says air quality is the term we use to describe how polluted the air we breathe is. So if air quality is the measurement of pollutants that we are breathing, then it is important to understand how pollutants move through the air. How do pollutants move through the air? Imagine the three states of matter as you've been probably taught them in school. Solids, liquids and gases. Solids are tightly packed with no spaces between molecules. Liquids are more loosely packed and are free to move around. Gases have loads of space and move around a lot. If we were to add a second substance, like a pollutant, your colour to blue, it would want to move in these states of matter such that it was evenly distributed. However, it would not be able to do this in a solid because it is too tightly packed. It could in a liquid and gas though, and this process is called diffusion. The textbook definition of diffusion is when a substance moves from an area of high concentration to low concentration. This process is passive, meaning that so long as there is a concentration gradient, it will happen. This is a quick demonstration showing what happens if you drop black ink into a volume of water. You can see flow patterns in the liquid, and these are the convection currents. Convection is the heat transfer due to bulk movement of molecules within fluids. Gradually over time you can see the ink moves around so that it is evenly distributed in the glass. This is due to both diffusion and convection. Slight warning, this experiment involves the use of aerosols which may not be suitable for people who suffer from asthma or have other breathing difficulties. It's not as easy to see gases diffusing, but it is possible to smell them. This experiment involves placing one person with a can of deodorant or air freshener at one end of the room. Then, at set distances away from this person, place other people. It's important to measure these distances, so if they want to repeat the experiment, you can change this variable more reliably. Using a stopwatch, time how long it takes for each person to be able to smell the deodorant or air freshener after the first person has sprayed it. Here are some questions you can ask when running this experiment. Who smells it first? Who smells it strongest? What happens if you spray more or less? What happens if you place a fan behind the sprayer? What other factors might affect how the smell moves? This demonstration is similar to the first one except one glass is full of cold water and the other is filled with hot water. The ink disperses more quickly in the hot water because there are stronger convection currents and the average kinetic energy of the water molecules is higher, resulting in faster diffusion. It is possible to increase the speed of dispersion in the cold water by adding some other currents caused by agitating the glass. How does this relate to how pollutants move in the troposphere, the lowest level of the atmosphere? The troposphere is where most weather phenomena occur and is actually why it's called the troposphere, as tropos is Greek for turning. If we quickly imagine some industrial processes as a source of pollutant emissions, we can label factors that would affect how the pollutants generated from this process might disperse in the troposphere. Similarly to how the agitation of the glass, or the hot and cold water, affected the ink in the previous demonstrations, Wind speed and ambient temperature, considered together along with other factors as meteorological conditions, have a huge effect on how pollutants disperse. The length of time that the source is emitting fur also has an impact. This variable is analogous to the length of time that the first person sprayed the deodorant can for in the experiment earlier. The height of the emission source, whether they are being emitted at ground level from a car exhaust or 100 metres in the air from a stack or flue. The terrain, whether it is mountainous or flat, will affect how the pollutants disperse over the landscape. Finally, the exhaust temperature of the emissions plume influences how the pollutants disperse. Generally, hotter plume temperatures mean pollutants rising higher and often dispersing faster. A large part of what we do at ACOM is to use computer models that consider these variables to predict where pollutants from various emissions processes end up. This is called atmospheric dispersion modelling.